So I'm just going to do um, a quick overview of Interplay Central. I'm not going to do too much of the demonstration because Graham's going to go a little bit more in depth after my piece. So this is just a quick uh, five, ten minutes on what is Interplay Central. Some of you may have heard of Interplay Sphere. Uh, what's our cloud, our cloud uh, solution? How do we compete against Adobe Anywhere? So I'm here just to dispel some of the myth and then Graham's going to show you more of the product in depth. So Interplay Central uh, is an actual product. Interplay Central is a product which um, is based around Interplay. So we have an asset management system which sits on top of ISIS and it's called Interplay. That asset management system has been around for seven years now. We've got over a thousand installations worldwide of Interplay as an asset management tool. Once you have your ISIS and you have your Interplay system, you then have options for the asset management. You have Interplay Central, you have Interplay Archive, you have Interplay Background Transcode. So our cloud-based solution has been around now for two years. It's based upon our asset management system, which has been around for two years. And our cloud-based solution uh, comes in twofold. It comes in Interplay Central and Interplay Sphere. So this is Interplay Central. Interplay Central is a web browser. So I'm logging into Pinewood Studios. I'm actually um, attempting to tether off my phone. As you can see here, I'm connected to my Android phone, which is in my pocket here. So through my Android phone and through my VPN, I get access to the Pinewood system. So inside my Pinewood facility, we have an ISIS, we have one Interplay server, and we have a cloud server. So that cloud server is hosting this website. So if you invest in Interplay and insight in, in into the technology, you would host a website inside your facility. So it's a, it's a private cloud because we're not uploading any rushes. We're not uploading any offline or proxy files. In fact, there are no proxy files being uploaded. So on the actual website address, you have access and you give a user access. So this could be a client, this could be someone in the ingest room, this could be a producer. When that person logs in, that person then get access to an interface. So this interface uh, shows you the, the actual rushes on your ISIS. So how do you get the rushes to, to appear on your actual folder? So here on the left-hand side, I have uh, lots of folders sitting alongside here. So these folders, or this media being ingested, is actually on the ISIS. So th this media could come in by a content agent. They could actually write MXF files directly to the ISIS. And content agent have access to these folders. The content agent writes to a folder called content agent, for example. Or if you're in a media composer, you've A major clips, you've transcoded them to DNX 120, for example, they're on the ISIS. Once you save your media composer project, your project will then appear here, and then your project bins would appear here. So if you had, for example, real one, two, three, four, once you save your media composer project, it automatically submits that project to a folder structure, and then once you give someone access, they will then see the media composer project in the actual web browser. So that's how you get your material to appear on here. So as I actually look at the clips and double click these clips, what's happening at this point here is that the server is reading the MXF file. So there's a little bit of a delay here because I'm, I'm on a phone and officially we don't support going through a phone. But what's actually happening here is the cloud server inside Pinewood Studios is reading the DNX 36 and on the fly it creates a proxy and sends it to my web, web browser as I'm viewing it. So as soon as the rushes are on the ISIS, we don't transcode any proxies, we don't upload them to the cloud. Once they hit the ISIS, they're instantly available to your web browser. So I could be inside the facility or outside the facility. My rushes are given to the, given to the machine room. The machine room ingests my rushes, you place them on the ISIS. As soon as they're placed on the ISIS, i.e. through a web browser, or sorry, through Media Composer, ingested through Media Composer or through Content Agent, you give the website address to a producer, you give the producer a log on which you create, the producer will see the folder called Vietnam. They'll go into Vietnam and they'll start viewing the rushes. And that's an instant process of happening. That's an instant in terms of you don't need to upload any rushes or transcode anything. You can do a couple of things. You can view the rushes, you can scrub through. So bear in mind, as I say, I'm doing this through, uh, I'm actually tethering through my phone as well. You can mark in points, you can mark out points as well. So go mark uh, an in point on there, mark an out point on here. I can create a very rough sequence if I wanted to. So some would call that an assemble edit, for example. So I can go in and adjust these clips and create a sequence from here. So you can see down in my timeline, these are actually now being built up as an effect. There's a timeline, should I say. Uh, on top of that, I could also add markers. So you can see as, as I'm viewing the clip, as I'm viewing the clip, I can scrub through. And these marker information are the same markers you see coming through Media Composer. So as I'm looking at the clip and actually pressing the marker button, at the top here, I can also then add a marker as well. So, that, so I'm actually accessing the footage on the ISIS itself. Now once I do this, and once I click off this, and also save this sequence, 
This material, this information, shall I say, the metadata, is they're stamped to these master clips. And they're the same master clips that are in Media Compose as well. So this sequence now within my web browser, within Media Composer back in Pinewood Studios, I can go into, within Media Composer we have an interplay window, it's an interplay bin. Within Media Composer now, I could instantly go to my Media Composer, find this sequence called New Sequence 03, which is in the fol folder called Central Horrors Clips. I drag that into my Media Composer timeline, and Media Composer automatically links to the high-res DNX footage, because Media Composer is directly connected to the ISIS. While that's happening, and the editor is working, the producer could still be viewing these shots. Not only could they be viewing and marking and out points, I could also be selecting shots like that, and also creating subclips. So you see now, when I drag that in, that now creates a subclip associate there, and you see that you get dot subfile. So Interplay Central is a thin client technology. We call it a cloud technology, but you don't have to be outside the building. You can be inside the building on the wireless network. It's a logging technology through a web browser that allows customers to go in, view rushes on the ISIS, view the rushes, add markers, add subclips, and also create a rough sequence, cuts only, or in some cases, dissolved as well. And that's what Interplay Central allows you to do. So it's a thin client technology. The best thing about this is it goes through a web browser. So anybody can come in with a Mac or a PC, load up Google Chrome or Safari, but don't have to have any, any type of powerful machine, any type of um, video, the graphics card can be a standard graphics card, and they can do it on their laptop. You don't have to give the customer a PC or a laptop. They can do it through their actual laptop as soon as they come into the facility as well. So that's what Interplay Central does as a technology. And we don't recommend doing it through a tethering off a mobile phone. Obviously, that's at the customer's expense, so hopefully you're going to provide internet for them. But they would just do it through the actual internet within the facility as well. So Interplay Central is that technology. What we also have, so you can see now, I'm now playing the sequence. It's a little bit jaggedy, but that's because I'm tethering. I'm now playing the sequence associated with this, not the source. So Interplay Central is our thin client browsing technology. What Interplay Sphere is, some of you may have heard the marketing around Interplay Sphere. Interplay Sphere is not a product. It's basically a feature of Interplay. So I could take this media composer, which is on this laptop as well, and when I go inside the building, if I come in my laptop inside the facility, I take an ethernet cable, I plug directly into the ISIS, I load up my media composer project, I'm essentially a media composer inside the facility. As soon as I take that media composer up and I go home, I can still load up media composer, and through the network, I can still play the files sitting on the facility on the ISIS, but my media composer is at home. Because the same technology that's delivering this file to my web browser is the same technology that delivers it to my media composer sitting at home. So our equivalent, should we say, to Adobe anyway, even though there are quite a few differences between that, our media composer sitting outside the, outside the building is called Interplay Sphere, which is a full editorial client where you can have it inside or outside the facility. And then we also have something called Interplay uh, Central, which is a thin client technology a logging tool allow you to, to view your clips and view your rushes from that side as well. Um, I should also add before Graham gets into more depth about this, we will also be coming out with an iPad app at the end of June. So all of your rushes that go on the ISIS can be viewed on your iPad as they're coming in at the same time as well. So you could sit there and give the client an iPad inside the facility and they could view the rushes on the iPad rather than going into a web browser or going into a, a media composer as well from that side as well. So that's, our, that's our, my quick five minute spiel over. Uh, it's all based on ISIS. It involves you having Interplay, which is an asset management system been around for seven years. Our cloud technology has been established and been around for over two years now. And deployment-wise, we have over 50 installations worldwide, with over 10 installations now in the UK. Um, and for after that, I'll pass over to Graham and get more in detail with it. Thanks, Steve. Perfect. Thank you.